The summers of 23 have special meaning in Gloucester. They are touchstones in American art, a century apart. The summers of 1923 and 2023. This is a big moment for this museum. I think in 148 history, this is the biggest exhibition we have ever mounted as an institution. That's significant. The Cape Ann Museum will open Edward Hopper and Cape Ann, illuminating an American landscape, which will shed light on some of Hopper's life-changing years in Gloucester, particularly 1923. At the time, Hopper was 41, hadn't sold a painting in a decade, and was teetering on artistic irrelevancy. Elliot Bostwick Davis curated the exhibit. So I think in 1923, there must have been something here, probably the architecture of Gloucester that inspired him, and it's a great range of architecture. Drawn to Gloucester, but then captivated by a fellow painter, Josephine Joe Nivison, whom he knew through the artistic community in New York City, and whose meandering cat brought them together. We do know that it was Joe's cat, Arthur, who came here with her and was wandering the back streets and whether Edward Hopper captured her cat or found her cat is unclear, but again, delivered Arthur back to the very grateful Joe Nivison. And with that, he presented her apparently with a hand-drawn map of Gloucester and where they could paint together. Which they did with Joe encouraging Hopper to work in watercolor and prodding him to remember the lessons of painter Robert Henry, with whom they had both studied. Robert Henry had taught them to be sketch hunters, to walk the streets of Gloucester and the wharves and the waterfronts and to really paint what they loved. So Hopper paints trawlers and beaches and churches and the iconic mansard roof. I think it's one of the most joyous hoppers you'll ever see. It's really two awnings billowing in the Cape Ann breezes, the house with its, all of its um, mansard roof and its many dormers sort of piled up together. And it's flanked by foliage that's casting beautiful shadows onto the house itself and onto the screens below. So it has this quality of light and atmosphere on Cape Ann that he was clearly drawn to. And it becomes more than that. On their return to New York City, Joe urges the Brooklyn Museum of Art to exhibit some of Hopper's watercolors. Encouraged by the positive response, the museum buys the mansard roof. It was a very prestigious thing to have your work acquired by a major museum like the Brooklyn Museum at that time, who had been acquiring regularly works by John Singer Sargent and Winslow Homer, so they were well known for watercolor. And with that, he's off on a new trajectory, a very successful career as an American painter with his only second painting sale in over a decade. On to become one of the most recognized painters of the 20th century. The exhibit brings together more than 60 of his works, many on loan from the Whitney Museum in New York, to which Joe bequeathed the majority of their collective works when she passed away. Her work will be in the Cape Ann Museum exhibit as well, as will the story of their 43-year marriage and the role she played in managing his career. It is a story of art and love and perseverance and an abiding affection for Gloucester. It's so exciting to bring here to where the works were created, just steps away from the museum or the actual sites of Hopper's painting. And in many ways, Hopper made these, these houses just the superstars that they are. We as the Cape Ann Museum exist to tell the singularly unique role that this place has played, and we would argue continues to play, in changing the course of both American art and American art history. His work is just beautiful, <laughs> and the exhibit opens on his birthday, July 22nd. It also marks the 100th anniversary of that seminal 1923 summer on Cape Ann. Big summer, and that exhibit will run through uh, mid-October, so you've got time to go see it. Just to give you a sense of the value of his work now, the Mansard roof sold for $100. A little hard to say what that would be worth today, but his 1929 oil painting, Chop Suey, sold five years ago for $92 million. <laughs> A little more than 100. <laughs> yeah, wow. All right. Still ahead, creating from what the sea leaves behind.